I'm sure you've talked about on your show previously, health span and lifespan. Right. Um, so can a ketogenic diet increase your lifespan? Uh, arguably, yes, because uh, about 70% of chronic disease, the root cause, it, you know, the, co the, the complicating factors are obesity, inflammation, and insulin resistance. That's about 70%. Mm. And chronic disease being cancer, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, Alzheimer's. Um, and in fact, Alzheimer's is probably a type three diabetes. So because ketogenic diets are so good at reducing inflammation, moderating insulin resistance and making you more insulin sensitive, reducing obesity, it really reduces your risk of those chronic diseases again, by about 70%. So that tends to improve your, your lifespan, but, but let's also talk about health span and health span mm. is the, you know, the good years you're living without having morbidities that interfere with your quality of life. Um, so in the Western world, because of medical science, we're able to keep people alive for years and years and years that have very low quality of life. You know, they can't go up a flight of stairs, they're in wheelchairs, they're breathing oxygen, you know, they're taking all kinds of medication that, you know, anti-tumor medication, um, all kinds of interventions, all of which really are addressing symptoms of chronic disease, not necessarily the root cause, which by the way, I think is at the mitochondrial level in the cell, but that's again another we did a whole show on mitochondria too so um that's maybe a story for another day but there's three things where uh ketogenic diets might um might affect that one is that um one of the things that happens when you uh, have high blood sugar is the excess sugar in your blood again from a high carbohydrate diet mm. the excess sugar in your blood um starts to gum things up is a good way to put it it starts to it starts to attach to some fats, but in particular proteins in and on cells and in the blood and so on. And, and uh, these things are called AGEs, advanced glycated entities or end products. And, uh, and it spells out age. And, and I think that's good because I think that really is causing a lot of the aging because the, the problem with age is there are receptors uh, for AGEs that are on some of the white blood cells. So they're called receptors for AGEs or rage. And the rage is a perfect word for it because what it does is cause a cascade of inflammation that rages through your body that is responsible for a lot of those aches and pains you feel as you're aging. It's an inflammatory process. And again, you can measure that in your blood. Um, uh, there's a protein called, uh, um, uh, there's a test called high sensitivity CRP or <laughs> C-reactive protein, that's a good marker of your inflammatory state. So most people keto adapt have very low uh, HS uh, CRP mm -hmm. um, because, and that, so that's moderating the AGEs. So that's one place because low, again, high blood sugar leads to AGEs, causes rage, causes systemic inflammation. One of the three hallmarks of chronic disease. Um, yeah. Secondly is the uh, telomeres, uh, mm -hmm. you would have talked on about on your show, I'm sure, which are the little, they're like those little plastic things on the, on the end of your laces, you know, and they stop the um, chromosomes from fraying as they get older. And so you, so there's a, um, um, an enzyme called telomerase, which helps that stay in place. Yeah. Um, as you age, you reduce your telomerase, the telomeres shorten, and, and this seems to have an effect of activating genes or inactivating genes that lead to the aging process as well. It turns out that uh, uh, HBH or uh, the, um, the main ketone that's produced, uh, hydroxybutyrate, hydro, um, um, uh, beta hydroxybutyrate, BHB, sorry, um, is, is really good at, at enhancing telomerase activity. So it may help preserve those telomeres as well. Um, and the third place, again, goes to the mitochondria, which is, uh, these are the little energy producers in the cell. Um, now, when you uh, metabolize sugar, it goes through an anaerobic process, a fermentation process called glycolysis before it goes into the oxidative respiration, which is why you need to uh, breathe oxygen uh, to produce the ATP that's the currency within the cells. Um, glucose is good at that. It's the main fuel for most of us. Uh, the problem is it produces byproducts that are also inflammatory, both inside and outside the cell. They're, they're called... Um, you know, oxidative compounds or reactive oxygen species. And so that's why a lot of the vitamins you're talking about supplements. Um, uh, and by the way, another supplement that I think is good to take is fish oil because it's high in omega-3, which is anti-inflammatory. Uh, and my colleague at the Cancer Research Center is a big fan of omega-3s to prevent cancer. Um, so yeah, so the mitochondria, 
Um, if they're now burning fats instead of sugars, they bypass that fermentation process. So there's a lot less reactive oxygen species. So again, less inflammation. So I, I think aging is actually uh, something that happens at the mitochondrial level. The mitochondria become tired, inflamed. They, they, uh, they either go into senescence where they stop working uh, or they become faulty and they start releasing chemicals that are kind of nasty to the cell internally. Um, and I think, um, again, the, the, the way you create healthy mitochondria is to have them dividing because they divide within the cell like cells do. Uh, the best way to cause your mitochondria, mitochondria to divide is through exercise, especially aerobic exercise. Uh, so aerobic exercise and, and, and ketones really promote the health of the mitochondria. That again is an anti-aging. So there's three areas again, the, the reduction of AGEs and the rage inflation, inflammation that cause, comes from that, the uh, preservation of uh, telomeres through uh, enhanced uh, telomerase activity, and then healthier mitochondria. Okay, excellent. So, and, and what that does is, you know, prevent you. So if you kind of look at it as, you know, here's my, my health over time, hmm. you know, the, what you want to have is, uh, what we have now is, you know, you're healthy and then your fifties, you keep living, but it, your quality of life drops and drops and drops and drops. What you want to do is have a good quality of life, you know, and then a couple of bad weeks and, you know, and then, uh, <laughs> In the end, it, it, you know, nobody gets out of here alive, right? But you just want to yeah. be, uh, enjoy the party as much as you can till the end. The best way to do that, the most important thing, Richard, is uh, what's on the end of your fork. Um, there's a study done in 2016, mm -hmm. a global study on the burden of chronic disease um, that showed that uh, nutrition is more important uh, for preventing chronic disease, good nutrition. Uh, it's the most important lifestyle factor, more important than smoking, more important than alcohol consumption or overconsumption, more important than sedentary behavior, lack of exercise, all of those combined, nutrition is more important. So the most important uh, decision you make in terms of your health uh, is what's on the end of your fork. And, and uh, the other adage we say is you can't outrun your fork. So, it, it, you know, if you're doing all these other things that are healthy, oh, I exercise a lot so I can eat crappy food. No, you can't. <laughs> you can't outrun your fork. Uh, that's going to establish whether you're going to be healthy or not is, is, is what you're eating. Right. So, so thank you. Yeah. So on, in aging and um, kind of brain health. So I remember you, you spoke, I, either it was in one of your talks or, or in the book, it was about uh, ketones and the brain using ketones rather than sugar um, as, as maybe a cleaner way of, so, uh, yeah, so if we could go a little bit over it, is that okay? Sure, yeah, yeah, no, I, I'm happy to talk about that. Again, um, <clears throat> my friend, Dr. Kunane at, at University of Sherbrooke has done studies on people with uh, mild cognitive impairment and Alzheimer's, but mm -hmm. if we just look at a healthy brain, um, uh, you, you, you don't need ins like muscle cells and fat cells need insulin to get the sugar into those cells. Uh, that's not the case with the brain. The brain actually uh, doesn't need insulin to get the sugar in. It is transported in because it can't go through the membranes easily. So it has to be tran actively transported in. Um, ketones, on the other hand, uh, just go passively. There is a receptor that it takes through there, but it's actually called the MCT receptor, but it's, it's, it's not MCT oil. It's not related. <laughs> it's just the abbreviation, but it goes through this MCT receptor, but just down its concentration gradient. Right. So, so, and it's kind of like, if you think of your brain again, like a car, the glucose is kind of a gas powered car that produces lots of like carbon and waste and, and gas. The, uh, the ketone is kind of like an electric powered car. So it's clean burning. It doesn't produce reactive oxygen species to the same degree, if at all. Uh, and that again causes local inflammation and, and Alzheimer's and cognitive impairment are associated with inflammation in the brain. We can, we can see that. Um, so uh, uh, there is some, I mean, an anecdotal case, there's one woman, uh, she came into my office one day, this is at the university and uh, I'd, I'd been counseling her um, amongst a group of people on, on ketogenic diets. And, and she said, she said, I just, I, I wanna thank you so much. And I said, thank me for what? And she said, I woke up this morning and it was like somebody pulled 10 years of cotton wool out of my head. Like I've just, I have this clarity that I've never, I've had foggy brain. So we talked about those three hallmarks that I call them the axis of illness, the inflammation, insulin resistance, and obesity. Um, you can tell if you're obese, you know, take your clothes off, stand in front of a mirror. If you have a big gut, you know, you're, <laughs> you're probably obese. It's easy to measure. Um, you can tell if you're inflamed because you'll hurt. Your body hurts. You have aches and pains. 
uh, not aches and pains associated with degenerative, you know, discs or anything like that, but, but your body aches, aches and pains that you would associate with aging. That's actually the AGEs and the systemic inflammation. So if you ache, you'll notice that. Uh, how do you know if you're insulin resistant if, if you're not measuring your blood sugar? Because you can be insulin resistant for years before diabetes kind of kicks in as a disease. Uh, and that's an arbitrary definition. Uh, it's that brain fog. So uh, there's no reason why your brain can't be, you know, active in an optimal way. It slows down a bit as you age, that's natural, but, but you can maintain that cognitive power um, uh, if your brain does not get inflamed. And, and there's good evidence to, in fact, there's a woman, uh, uh, Suzanne Del, Del Monte at, at Brown University uh, coined the term type three diabetes for Alzheimer's, which is an insulin resistant brain. So, so you don't need the insulin to get the sugar into the brain, but you do need insulin in those cells in order to process that fuel properly, in order to get the car to run, if you like. Um, and, and, uh, and if the cells become insulin resistant and cells become insulin resistant because there's been too much insulin in the blood for too long. Mm -hmm. And of course that correlates with the carbohydrate consumption. So if the brain becomes insulin resistant, it's going to, it's going to have trouble getting uh, glucose into the brain cells and your brain's not going to work as well. And you'll get fogginess, a foggy sort of head. Um, the ketones just go right in there. My, the mitochondria love them. All of a sudden your brain starts working better. And, and some people like <laughs> my friends call it the Harper high. When you go through this adaptation process, the keto adaptation process, which takes a couple of weeks for the, all mm -hmm. these genes to turn on and these enzymatic pathways to turn on. Um, some people, about a third of people just wake up one day and they just go, Oh my God, I just feel fantastic. Like I haven't felt like this good, just general sense of wellness, good mood, energy, uh, clarity of thought. Um, it's, it's, it's pretty consistent with some people. It happens all of a sudden with other people. It sort of comes on over a period of a few weeks. Uh, but that's an amazing, uh, an amazing result. If that was the only result, it would all be worth it, but you're also mm -hmm. losing body fat and you're resisting chronic disease. And, and we may be able to, I mean, part of the research we're doing is to see if it could be used as a therapeutic to treat chronic disease without drugs. Right. Excellent. Um, so, Thank you. What I'd like to talk about, I mean, that, so that sounds really, yeah, very hopeful. I mean, if you're getting cognitively impaired as you get older, having getting into ketosis. I call, but, I call it noun disease. I can't remember what the, what do you call that thing? Who is that person? No, you know, that? Yeah. Hey, that's all normal. That's all just happens as you get older. It's okay. It's because we have so much other important information in there. It gets a little trickier to find if your brain's kind of like a yeah. junk drawer, you know, you got to sift around till you find it. It's in there though. <laughs> it's in there. Yes. Yeah. If you, if you can't find your keys, that's fine. If you can't remember what a key does, Okay, you might want to see somebody about that. Yeah, that's a problem. I hope that you found the video informative. Please do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell button and choose all for any new video release notifications. It encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and extending healthy lifespan. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon. <laughs>